Hi everyone, it's Chrissy Hughes again with video number two on a pre-deployment here at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm your life skills educator, also in deployment support. So we just finished up talking a little bit about uh, emotional cycles of deployment. Um, I wanted to draw attention to a couple of these. One is the anticipation of departure. Now what's interesting about these cycles is that they present differently in family members than they do in service members. So the anticipation of departure, for example, with a service member might be, hey, I'm really excited to actually get out and do the job that I'm trained to do. I learn how to work this equipment. I learn how to um, sail this ship or fly this airplane or uh, cook this food or clean this area or um, any of those other technical jobs that I don't know much about. Um, and I'm really excited to do that. Um, so I'm showing a lot of excitement during the anticipation of departure. Whereas my um, significant other or my family members, even my parents at home, might be feeling very anxious or uh, guilty or frustrated about the fact that you're leaving. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, the stages will go anticipation of departure, um, detachment and withdrawn, and then um, emotional disorganization. Emotional disorganization is typically like that spouse or child that's crying on the pier. Um, I don't know how I can make it through deployment. I want to I bring this in because I want to tie it into goals in the next section. But for example, um, the anticipation, the emotional disorganization um, is also um, a good time for a spouse that might be looking at, hey, I'm just gonna survive deployment, whereas someone else will say, I'm gonna come back from this deployment or I'm going to come out at the end of this deployment better than when I went into it. Kind of like COVID-19, right? Um, we wanna actually come out of this situation with more skills than when we came into it. So that's why I bring this up because there actually are some positive aspects of deployment. Some of you might say, oh, money is a positive aspect of deployment. Um, control of the remote for the spouse at home. The fact that I can just say, hey, I don't really want to cook dinner for a few months and uh, I'm okay eating yogurt and cereal and go ordering takeout. That, those are some positive aspects. Some of the additional money that's coming in. Some of the opportunities of personal growth. So these are some of the other positive aspects that we have put into on, um, on the positive aspects of deployment. Um, I want to say that one of the ones that I definitely agree with is this point here. I do think that deployment increases mental strength. I noticed that I have been able to take the tools that I learned through a deployment of separation from my spouse and apply those to many aspects of my life. Um, so think about some of the things that might be really positive about this experience and focus in on those when you might not be enjoying some of the more negative aspects of being in a deployment or being um, involved in a separation. Okay, one of the ways that we can really do that is by setting some really smart goals. So these are some examples of some goals. Um, one of my colleagues likes to say, always make a career goal, a personal goal, and a financial goal. And those are something that if you are involved in a family unit, you can set those together mutually. And I really like that aspect. So a health goal, for example, checking you and your spouse or you and your family members, I wanna come back stronger. I wanna actually um, increase my running distance or lose weight or become stronger. I actually wanna learn how to do a pull up again. I got some weak arm muscles now, but eventually that's one of the goals I would like to be able to do again. That's just my personal one. Um, and then career goals, and then any kind of personal goal that you might have. I might wanna rank up during a deployment. I might want to increase some of my uh, credentials that I have. Um, and this is also too, where I said before, making, sure, making a plan to survive deployment versus coming back from a deployment better. Now, I as a spouse, I work with a lot of spouses. I have taken spouses to seek treatment during a deployment for alcohol drug dependency. I've also seen spouses complete degrees, start businesses, um, and have come out very accomplished after a deployment. But that the main difference there is the mindset. Am I going to survive this experience or am I gonna grow and thrive through this experience? So think about how that relates to your personal um, life and, um, and yourself. The last thing I wanna cover, and again, this short video segment, is self-care. So thinking too, um, how am I going to take care of myself during this deployment? 
How am I going to handle when I get frustrated, overwhelmed, need to take a break? How am I gonna go forward and do that? This can be different for many different people. Um, so I actually have the wonderful experience of going out on ships and teaching curriculum for when sailors come back and return to their families. It's one of my favorite aspects of my job. I really enjoy it. Um, what I notice is that I have very little time when I'm out on those ships to be in my own space. I have someone sleeping above me, someone sleeping below me. I'm frequently with people in class. I talk to people um, going in the P ways and during all of my meals. So I really miss the opportunity to be alone, to decompress, to have some peace and quiet. So think for yourself, what are some of the challenges you might have under this way? And make sure you don't wait until you are at a breaking point where you have to have that alone time or you have to reach out to family or you have to have a moment of normalcy. Make sure you're checking in with yourself regularly on that operational stress continuum that we talk about. Make sure you're living in that green zone that you're regularly checking in and having that self-care. It is not selfish to have self-care. It is helping you and all your other family members, sailors, and those around you. That's very, very, very important. All right, it's the end of part two. I'll see you guys all for part three. Thanks.